Hi peaches, it's Shovel. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. Start today's video with a little self plug, a little shameless self plug. I hope that's okay. It's been so cute recently to be getting comments from people being like, Shaba, when's the next song out? <laughs> I've been having so much fun making music. I sadly haven't been spending as much time as I've wanted to on it, so I'm the tiniest bit behind schedule. But also I'm gonna say that's not my fault because February is really short. So although although this is supposed to be February's release, my new song, My Girlfriend, is coming out if, if you're watching this video on the day it's uploaded, which should be the 7th of March, tomorrow on the 8th of March at midnight, whatever your time zone might be. It's part of my EP collection, Inside Voices. This voice is most definitely gay. And whilst we're super duper here for it, we're also a little bit self-critical. If I may be really honest with you, it's a song that I really like lyrically and in terms of why I wrote it, but it's not my favorite song on the EP. So I don't know if I should be saying that. I'm just being really honest with you. But I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. And of course, I'd super appreciate your support. So if you wouldn't mind giving it a listen to, you know, see, see what you think for yourself. You can do so all over the internets where you might listen to your music, Spotify, Apple, Deezer, the blah, 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 blah. You can type in Shabra on any of those platforms and also put the little pre-save link downstairs in the description box. All right, but today, Today is not a music video. Today, I thought we'd take storytelling in a little bit of a different direction. You know we love storytelling here because, let's be honest, it is a little bit juicy. It is so fun to look at, but I also genuinely believe that we can learn so much from the storytelling of other people. Which is why, when I found this article of most spoilt people, I was like, <laughs> what lessons can we pick up here? BuzzFeed collated a bunch of stories from people who overheard the most spoiled things. Kind of like those overheard in Waitrose Facebook pages or Karen's in the wild. That's another one that I used to see a lot. Karen's been around for a while. <laughs> so I thought we'd take a look at some spoilt behavior today and see what we think, see how we feel. The word spoilt and the word selfish has really bad connotations. I feel like spoilt has more of a negative connotation than selfish does. For me, I've definitely been on a journey where I've been trying to reclaim the word selfish. I pull a face because it's so contextual, but I really do believe that there is a very healthy way of being selfish. There's a, there's a need to be selfish sometimes. And then there is a way where being selfish cannot be a good thing. With the word spoilt, can you say the same? Obviously being spoilt can not be a great thing, but is there ever an occasion in which being spoilt is a good thing, can be seen as a healthy way of being spoiled. I'll give you an example with the whole selfish thing, right? I'm sure this is an experience we can all relate to in some way. You've been really busy. Nobody knows what's going on in your life, right? More than you do. You've been really busy. You've been doing a lot. You have a day off. You're really excited for that day off. And then you get a call, a text, a message. Someone reaches out and is like, hey babe, got this thing going on. Might be a really fun thing. Do you reckon you wanna come along? Do you reckon you can help me out? You know, whatever it is. And you're like, mm, you know what? No, I don't think I can. I don't really have plans, but not having a plan is a plan in itself and this is what we're gonna be doing. That's, that is my plan. So for whatever reason, whether it's because you're wanting to catch up on housework, catch up on DIY, just have some time for yourself. You're like, sorry, babe, kind, polite, pass. And that person then turns around and goes, oh my goodness. That's really selfish, don't you think? In this moment, this person really, really needs you. When that kind of thing happens, there are definitely some moments where I'm like, mm, you know what? We do need to sacrifice some points on well-being. That wonderful rejuvenating time will still be available at another moment. And right now this is more important. But there are also some moments where it's like, you know what? You can figure that out, babe. I really, really need this time for me. And that is perfectly okay too. But so many people tell us that it is not okay. And when they're saying that, they're not saying that to protect your interests. They're saying that to further their own at the expense of yours. And that's what I mean when I say that there is a healthy way to be selfish and sometimes being selfish is healthy. You know, or if someone is in like a really difficult place and they could really be doing with support, but supporting them comes at a huge mental detriment to you because they're not helping themselves and it's really affecting you, sometimes the best thing to do is to step away, which to some people might sound horrible, but again, in some contexts could be a really healthy and important selfish step to take because the benefit that you provide by being in there may not end up being that useful or the cost for providing that to yourself may end up being significantly more tollsome. Is that a word? Toiling? Toll? You know what I mean? Take a toll more than the situation might deem it worth, you know? So... This is this is basically sharp on a therapy couch, right? My point is, can we be healthily spoiled in the same way? And I'm not sure there is. So let's see. I went to middle school, says an anonymous poster, in the wealthy area of Boca Raton. Where is that? Even though I lived in a more modest part, 
Where is Boca Raton? Am I saying that right? It's a city in Florida in Palm Beach. Well, it looks super fancy. Known for its golf courses, parks, and beaches. Sounds very cute. I mean, Florida right now as well, but environmentally, it sounds very cute. <laughs> Second largest city in the Palm Beaches. It's a community where history and innovation come together, influenced by notable architecture. It's built around an elegant Mediterranean revival style that later grew into a vibrant city full of rich art and culture. Okay, so Ponzi. This is what I'm hearing. Ponzi living. Bougie Ponzi living. I see you. Why is Boca Raton called the mouth of the rat? The city names come from Boca de Ratons, a Spanish term meaning rat's mouth that appeared on early maps and referred to hidden sharp pointy rocks that gnawed on fretted ship cables. I kind of see it. I kind of see it. Anyway, that's a huge digression. One day, says the commenter, I found a girl crying on the bathroom floor. When I asked her why she was crying, she said through sobs that her mum wouldn't let her get a new $350 Tory Birch bag. I see. <laughs> I see. I have so many questions. My first question being, do you think they actually said the amount? Do you think the girl was just like, this new $350 bag? And was that supposed to be a flex? Or was that supposed to indicate like, it's not that big a deal. It's just $350. Right now I'm finding myself questioning why I ever thought that spoilt would be good, but we're gonna try and have faith. This is not ideal. This, this is very not ideal. The people pleaser in me is just like, you know what? Everyone has their own levels, which is genuinely true. We don't know what other people are going through and sometimes I think it's really difficult when you compare up and you complain up as well because you can be like oh so and so's a billionaire what problems could they possibly have to have that kind of mindset I think is incredibly ignorant there are so many cliches that come into mind but the biggest one being with more power comes more responsibility right like you you always like you don't know what someone else is going through just because they have resources doesn't mean that their cost levels and their responsibilities are at the same here and all of this is just like a profit margin that's not entirely how it works it's never how it works in fact but no this definitely does just seem spoiled I'm sorry I'm sorry Tory Burch lady you just just, you just been silly does that mean Maybe this is me. Let's see. Let's see. In high school, a boy in my class asked the teacher, how can people live making less than $200,000 a year? Wow. I feel like this is less spoiled and more just lacking perspective, right? Like lacking culture, lacking awareness, lacking empathy. What is $200,000 in pounds? I really want to know this. That's 157,000 pounds a year. <laughs> Sorry, that's like, that's just blowing my mind. What is the average salary in the UK? The average salary is 34,900, so 35,000 pounds per year. That was in 2023, which ranges from 31,000 in the North to 44,000 in London. So if my math is mathing, that's like a fifth. No, wait, a sixth of what this person thinks is like the minimum amount to be able to live. That's amazing. In the US, the average annual wage is 74,700. So round it up, 75,000. Dollars. That was in 2021, to be fair. Oh, wow. And in 2023, that number's 59,300. So rounding down to 59. Wow. Okay, bearing in mind that that was just like a really quick Google search. I'm not checking the sources. I'm not verifying it. Take it with a pinch of salt. Still, what the frick? What the frick? Also, why are people thinking about this in high school? Like I think about my time in high school, maybe times have just changed generally and have become more commercialized and capitalized generally. But like, I don't think I ever questioned what my parents did properly, let alone how much they were making a year when I was in high school. My head was way too preoccupied on social pecking order, on figuring out what I wanted to do with my life in terms of like just wants of a job and like wanting to be creative and do things that made me happy and trying to dye my hair ridiculous colors. Like who, th who thinks this kind of thing in high school? Clever people, probably. <laughs> But yeah, I, I would say this is less spoiled and more blinkered. Why am I trying to like defend spoiled behavior? This is spoiled. This is very spoiled. This is a kind of person that I think would really benefit from going on a show. Have you seen a show called Rich House, Poor House? I love the show so much. And honestly, it shows like that that get really bad rap, but for me is the real like epitome of education through entertainment. The everyday person is not just gonna sit down and read articles from the Financial Times about how to best spend your monetary value assets and budgeting and allocating different amounts per annum. It's just not gonna happen. People don't do that, but they do like watching TV. And when there's a show that they can be like, oh, it's so entertaining. But actually what it shows is how horrific the class divide is and questions why is this as unfair as it is? Why is it that some people have the amount of income like disposable, left over, just like fun income after bills of this amount that could literally pay this person's living for an entire year? And it's not to do with how hard they work because they all hustle really hard, but more to do 
with the cards they were dealt when they were younger, the situations that they find themselves in, and the fact that the government schemes that are currently in place limit them from being able to progress themselves further. If, for example, they've got a disability, they fall into some level of sickness, they have children, they're on a benefit system that actually doesn't allow for them to find work in a way that sustains their lifestyle so that they can unlock to, to move to different and arguably better stages of life. Do you know what I mean? You can learn all of that from a TV show and have fun whilst you're doing it. And that's a significantly more accessible message. I don't really know where this video is going. This is just me being like, <laughs> it's just, just sharper thoughts. My point is it's a good show. I don't think it deserves a bad rap that it has. I think it's a really interesting narrative and somebody like this who thinks that you can't live with less than 200,000 a year needs to go and live in the poor house version of the rich house, poor house thing. Cause they would learn a lot. Wow, wow, wee wow. This guy I know just turned 16 a couple of months ago. He got a Tesla for his birthday. Spendy. But he came into class the next day ranting about how he wanted a Lambo. No words. I have no words. <laughs> my first car wasn't even my first car. It was Jamie's first car and we shared it. And it was um, this adorable, amazing, tiny little Ford Fiesta. It was so cute and it was really clunky. But you know what? It got the job done. It got us from point A to point B. I've never really seen cars more than just like the functional aspects that I really enjoy from them. Like, don't get me wrong. I love a good heated seat or as Jamie's dad calls it, a pizza warmer. <laughs> They're amazing. But my focus and priority is definitely on like the functions of the insides of the car like does it have a good if I, if I have like money to spend on a car my question is like does it have a good sound speaker system so that I can listen to things properly does it have those little buttons on the chair so I don't have to like constantly clunk up and clunk down the chair whenever me and Jamie are like swapping driving positions you know like I've never thought oh I really need this brand that's really important to me in fact whenever there are fancy cars it genuinely really terrifies me like we've gone on holiday and rented a car Oh my goodness, the level of stress that there is in knowing that if you dink this car in any way, the cost of that dink is going to be so expensive. <laughs> I was in a car park once. I was terrible. And I was so stressed out because it was like a tight bay park with pillars. I was driving and I got myself so stuck in this spot because this car next to me was pretty huge and way too far over it was like the only spot and there were so many people around not watching but then like they end up watching i cried i was literally like <laughs> it's in the spot and this sensor thing was beefing at me because the wing mirror was like this far this far away from the pillar to the side i just went <laughs> and jamie's just like do you need me to take over for you i was like yeah <laughs> He's great at driving. He likes boys, toys, cars, things. That's Joe's thing. That's not my thing at all. So the idea of having a Lambo or a Tesla would just feels like too much pressure. I, I, no, thank you. No, thank you. There's a customer who shops at my store who always throws the loose change they get back into the garbage can on their way out. This isn't spoiled. This is just stupid. Like who does that? I'm so curious as to like, was this a lesson that your parents taught you? If I was a person who worked at that shop, I a million percent would be like, here is the garbage bin for your change. And then I would be collecting all of those coins because these coins add up. I have life tip, life hack. My bank offers this thing on the online banking where you can add this plugin where whenever you spend money, it will round it up to like the nearest pound. Um, and you can set the limits because sometimes like it'll round it up to five pounds if you spent like three pounds 67. It'll be like, okay, let me put one pound plus 30. 3p into your savings pot and it will just take those little like this thing is called like saving the pennies whatever it will take that and put that into your savings account and we save a lot of money just from doing that without even thinking about it i cannot even fathom if you're doing this in every single store that you go to just how much money you are throwing away that's number one number two even if you don't want it babe give it to charity i don't think i've ever been to a shop or a restaurant where you pay like with cash at a till and they don't have some sort of donation pot. And even if you're not gonna use it, say, keep the change. Like, just keep the change. Why would you bin it? This is bamboozled me. This is very stupid. I This has made me angry in ways that I don't, don't quite understand. No, I do understand, but we're not gonna go into it because it's just gonna make me too sad. Jesus, this is very spoiled. This is silly. My husband had a classmate who got his high school girlfriend pregnant. He didn't want to get married, but his mother convinced him to do the right thing by buying him a sports car 
an Xbox, and a bunch of other expensive stuff. No. Oh no. Could you imagine knowing that your marriage only happened because of a vroom vroom and a pew pew? That's pretty ridiculous. And that is a marriage doomed to end. I would not want to be in said marriage. This is giving Gilmore Girls level to me. It's like that high class society who's like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter if you're happy. Think of what the neighbors would say. And honestly, the people that I feel most sorry for is the partner in the situation and this kid, right, who clearly clearly doesn't know the first thing about being in a committed relationship if you're only gonna get married because you're doing it for materialistic reward like it's not it's not cash back it's not like when you buy insurance here's 30 pounds off your next tesco shop that's not how marriage works but also like that child oh my goodness they're gonna grow up in such a toxic environment if there is like no love there and the only reason you're together is because of said financial incentives. This is shocking me. This is shocking my brain. I don't think there's any good that can come from such selfishness. No, I'm, I'm trying to find the positive message. I don't think there is one. I will say though, I feel like in this situation, the mother is being significantly more selfish than the classmate, the person getting married. I just think that they're being really silly. A lot of this spoiltness, it really is just being blinkered, isn't it? It's not, what is the word? It's being out of touch with reality. There is a word for that. My vocabulary fails me most days, but certainly today. I don't think you can blame someone for not having that level of exposure, but you can certainly judge them for it. I'd encourage them to do better. Whoa. I went to a private school and once I saw a girl carry her coverless MacBook above her hair to protect her head from the rain. Am I saying that I have done this? Not this specifically, but I have done things just as stupid. I wouldn't say that's because I'm spoiled. I think it's just because I'm stupid. <laughs> Especially the ADHD traits that come in and it's just like, and they'll be like, oh. <laughs> we'll just get past this one, I think. I think this is more a sense of not understanding the consequences of actions more than being spoiled, but you know, I, I see how sometimes they go hand in hand. Sometimes you don't realize how spoiled you are because you don't need to think about the consequences of your actions. Sometimes someone's just a little bit stupid. And then when bad things happen, you're like, oh dear, <laughs> I didn't think of this through. And now I really am screwed. And that is not a sign of being spoiled. That's just being stupid. <laughs> Let's move on. In middle school, I had a friend who cried for an entire week in school because her dad reduced her allowance from 1,500 to 1,000 Swiss francs per month. The average weekly allowance in our class was 30. Wow. I need to do another currency conversion here. 1,500 to 30, you're getting like 50 times more than your friends. <laughs> what? That is 1300 pounds. Did I do that right? Swiss francs. So you went down from 1300 pounds to a very modest 900 pounds per month during school. So like assuming you don't have bills to pay, you're literally in full-time education. This is just fun money. This is money for lunches, for transport and things. <laughs> Wow. I can't say anything more than wow. 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 This is unbelievable. Okay. All right. No. A shock aside, two third an allowance. I'm not saying like this, this clearly still a spoiled thing. I, I see, I see the privilege. I see, I'm blinded by the privilege. My sunglasses cannot protect me from the glare of this privilege. And at the same time, having a third less than what you're used to is quite a big difference. You know, like if your allowance was 30 and you got 10 instead, this big difference. And I know it's not the same because 10 is not enough for transport alone, let alone transport and food or whatever. And like a thousand compared to 1500 is, I, I get that. But this is what I'm saying about like problems being relative, right? Like you don't know, like someone might have commitments. I would understand the upset. I don't think it's like a warranted thing to like cry for an entire week about, but I'd understand the upset if say your commitment was a car or a big piece of like furniture or equipment, like tech equipment that they'd hired that they were putting towards that now they can't afford. I can see how if you get accustomed to a certain level, that can be difficult if it drops. But dude, who the frick gets 900 pounds a month? as a school allowance. Wow. wow, wow. That's a question. Is there a difference between privilege and spoil? Are you spoiled if you have privilege? And if you have privilege, does that automatically mean that you are spoiled? I'm gonna have such big discussions about this with friends and Jamie. I just I just know it. It's gonna turn into one of those big chats, but I don't know the answer to that. I'd be really interested in your comments though, let me know. Ah, let's do a couple more. I told a girl, I like your jacket. And she replied, it was $270 and I got it when my family went on a trip to Sweden. <laughs> I mean, it's fact, right? Again, I feel like I put myself in this position a lot. If somebody says to me, hey, I like the color of your hair, my automatic response is like, oh, 
thanks. It's this five pound bottle of like pink toner stuff I found online. Like it's amazing. I don't know where it came from. Even when like I used to wear Primark clothes only, I'd always remember the price of things. Someone's like, oh, nice top. I'd be like, yeah, thank you. Six pounds Primark. What? You like these joggers? Mm -hmm. 12 pounds ASOS. <laughs> it's just a thing. I don't think I do it anymore, but that's mostly because my brain just doesn't handle numbers in the same way that it used to. <laughs> I don't think it's like a flex thing. <laughs> Do you see it as a flex thing when someone like tells you the price of something? The only time I think I flex is when it's a bargain. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I got it for like three quid at the sale. <laughs> there you go. Nowadays, I both love it and hate it. I love it because it's really important that we do think about economic waste and fast fashion. Thrifting is a fantastic thing, all of the above. But it does really irk me when I see someone wearing something so beautiful. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous and they're like thank you i got it from a charity shop and i'm like yes well done for being a good person but oh my goodness my chances of finding this is zero that's a good problem to have <laughs> tiny violin very very tiny violin okay, yeah in my senior year of high school one of my teachers dedicated class time to get us to sign up for scholarships this one snooty little rich girl why did my head go, snutty little rich girl, ba la 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 This one snutty little rich girl refused to because, and I quote, my parents can pay for it, so it's whatever. I mean, am I gonna tell you off for being spoiled in that way? No, no, I think it's wonderful. Scholarship opportunities should be there for people who need them. And if you don't need them, don't be taking up that opportunity for someone else. I'm kind of grateful for this level of spoiltness if we're gonna call it spoiltness. Uh, unless, like, I guess the other way to see this oh my gosh and this feeds into my question of is privilege spoiled like what is a correlation or causation even between 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 being privileged and being spoiled because if this person has like a level of privilege but recognize a privilege and it's like well you know my parents can pay for it so i'm not gonna do it because i don't want to take away from an opportunity of someone else when i can and they can't that's amazing isn't that amazing that doesn't sound spoiled to me at all so yeah i kind of disagree with this one being a bad thing but um you do you i guess all right let's do one more ba -ba. in high school one of my peers got a bmw for their 16th birthday then crashed it while failing their driver's test. No. They got the car back from the shop, passed their test, then, no joke, totaled it within a week by accidentally rolling it into an intersection. This person shouldn't be driving. Oh my goodness. Their parents then got them another brand new BMW a few days later. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. wow. And my faith in humanity is gone. No, no, I'm kidding. My faith from the f post that we just did where I was just like, oh, there, there is there is positivity in, in recognizing privilege. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's now eradicated in this post, but you know, I feel like this is a good one to end on. Wow. Wow. Weirdly, do you know who I feel really sad for? Um, the person who repaired the car. <laughs> it's like when people go, mate, I spent ages trying to fix that. You've just totaled it. It's like when you move house and you see someone's put a lot of effort into like painting a wall or something and you're like, oh, wow, it's so pretty, but it's so not to my taste and you go over it and you're just like, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad because of all of the work that you put in. It's the situation. It is absolutely the situation. What was the point in that person spending their time repairing that if you were just gonna roll it into a friggin' intersection? Who? How? Who does this? I just, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's a good time to end this video. Have we learned anything? I don't know. I don't know. I've had a little bit of fun though, and I definitely have some philosophical questions that I'm gonna enjoy exploring to grow my own mindset. So yeah, I guess we have learned, haven't we? We can carry on this conversation downstairs in the comment section if you want to. Just remember to be kind if you enjoyed the video. Do give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time with another video. Meanwhile, please feel free to take a look at my girlfriend for a new song out tomorrow. Be kind and have a great day. Bye.